So let's say that we have been playing with the command line as we have, opening figures, loading pictures, plotting it, doing things with it as we have, for which you have to have watched video Zebra command line. It surely is inconvenient to keep trying everything on the command line and then not having a record of it. Well, the easiest way to keep a record of what you have been doing is to start by typing diary. As soon as you type diary, a log file will be made of everything that you are doing. So let's say that I'm in my session on my command line and I type clear figure, read the image, plot the image. I like my result, I'll type diary again. If I look at my underlying operating system for the file called diary, which you might do differently on your own machine, and I do that, I see there is indeed a file named diary. Once again, I'm going to use my underlying operating system to look for what the diary contains. And as you see, it just contains the three or four commands that I have typed, including the closing diary. Now, it's not going to be convenient to call all your functions diary, nor is this a convenient way of collecting the output because it literally will collect everything that your screen shows, including all of the output that you ever get that you may not want to see, and so on. I'll start over from a clear figure, from a clear screen, and I'll get rid of my diary later. The best way to start a script is to just type edit. And in this case, I'm just going to start a new script. And I'll call it, how about I call it Zebras for now. What this does is it starts the MATLAB editor where you can collect all the commands that you like. Such as read the image, plot the image, now I have a script called zebras.m, which I can execute. I can do this in two ways. I can either be, let me start from a clear, inside of my command window and type zebras, and it'll do whatever the file zebras says. I can do this another way. Let me start from a clear figure. I'll go to the editor, button, run, button. I'll run it, and it'll do it. When you're starting a script, everything is open. Everything that you are doing in the script is now in the workspace. So in the command window, if I type whose, I'll find the X I just loaded. And note that I have an unsigned integer. 424 by 687 times three of the image variable. Because you may be doing things from previous scripts, it's wise to start every script with a clear. Edit, run. There it is again. Maybe I'll show that it indeed is doing it by saying clear figure as part of my script. Save, edit, run. Once again, of course, the zebra disappears, then reappears. Edit, run. Clear figure, don't want to push any buttons, just type zebras. It's in the workspace, MATLAB can find it, and it'll do it. So in this window here, I'm going to build my script. In this window here, I'm going to either execute it or test line by line what I'll be putting. On our command line, what are the things that we did? Let me call these bits here preparation. It's good to do some housekeeping. Let me call this inputs. Let me start doing some calculations in here. 
then making some figures, etc. And then let's save some space for what will be output and other things. I'll put printed figures and so on. If I go from what I was doing before, which I've saved somewhere, I'll be sure to add print to PDF to the file PDF called zebra, how about zebras.pdf. And if I add it and run it, it's going to do it. And it's going to print the file, the zebras.pdf, which I see indeed as a figure on my screen ready for my report. What were some of the calculations that we were doing on the command line? Well, collecting the figures, colors. Red was the first channel, green the second channel, blue the third channel. It is wise to start a figure explicitly by assigning an axis handle to what you will be plotting. And in this case, get current axis is going to create a figure if it doesn't have one already, an axis on it if it doesn't have one already, and then return the number or the property set AH, which contains all the customizable pieces of this graphic. I'll run this one from the command line, zebras, and there it is. And you'll see, of course, I have my PDF created. Start from a clear figure, inspect what AH1 equals GC actually is doing. Well, it's creating an empty axis. And the axis has a number or a property set. It's an axis object, and it has properties such as the limits on the axis, the scale, linear log, the grid lines, and so on. It has a whole lot of other properties, all of which I can customize in the way that will become clear later. Another type of an axis that you might create, and this is what we'll be doing now, is do not say just create a current axis, but rather create a subplot. I'll type more on. And you'll see that it creates axes in tile positions. Read it. When you read it, you'll notice that typing subplot, two rows, one column. The first one is going to create a subplot that's over half the screen. I'm doing this because I'm going to make space for some other plots. Let me initialize those and say subplot. There'll be one. There'll be another one. There'll be a third one, which I'm going to, of course, label number th two, number three, and number four. And on this particular script here, I'm going to divide it, the second row, into three pieces. So now it's as if I'm doing a two by three starting from the fourth a two by three starting from the fifth and a two by three starting from the sixth good i'll run it to make sure everything's fine and i'm filling the first axis with the zebra but of course i notice it's now a panther so axis image is going to respect the proportions of that image. I have my reds and I have my greens. On axis two, I'm playing with histogram, another MATLAB function. If I plot histogram of the reds on this particular graph, I got a histogram. It's not a very nice looking histogram, so right away I'll use bin method Sturgis. 
as an example of an automatic bin selection that is not the default, but uses a rule called Sturgis rule. Or perhaps I should be doing that which I have been playing with earlier in the command line, and I'll define some histogram parameters such as the bins. Now earlier in the command line, I was playing with very explicit bins such as 0 through 15 to 255 because I knew my image had up to 255 colors. If I copy that and I evaluate that, and instead of bin method surges, if I give this array called hist bins as a second input to histogram, I will create a histogram with just that number of bins. Intervals of 15, counting from 0 through 255. Edit, run. There's my first histogram. Now, 255, 15, those are very, very explicit settings. I may like the fact that Perhaps I should want 15 bins. And in this case, I'm going to replace this array, which is a perfectly fine way to space numbers 0, 15, 30, and so on, using MATLAB's command linspace, going between 0 and 255 in 15 steps. That's different from intervals of 15. Now we'll get exactly 15 bins. If I copy this, on my command line just to test it. And I use my histogram just to test it. I got it in the wrong place, but that's fine. I'm just testing. And I will have exactly 15 bins. Now, let me just complete those lines. The reds. The greens. And the blues each go into these separate subplots. I'll type zebras here below, executing again, running the function, and I'll get three histograms. At this point, I'm still not happy. I don't like the fact that I have to put in the number 255 explicitly, when clearly 255 is a property of the image. If I look at who's x, I'll see that it's an unsigned integer 8, whose maximum value is indeed, as I can find out this way, the number 255. So I could replace 255 by int max of u int 8. I do this. It's not working. Why not? Well, that's because int max of u in 8 may look like the number 255 to you. But if I check the answer, it's actually itself an unsigned integer. And linspace doesn't work with unsigned integers. It works with doubles. So how about I turn this number into a double? This now shouldn't give me an error. And running this function again, or the script, is going to do what I want it to do. Now, I still don't like it because u and 8 is clearly the class that comes with this image that I've just read. I could find out by typing who's x. I can find another way by typing the functional form of the whose command and saying whose parentheses up quotes x up quotes parentheses and that now looks like it's the same information but I can assign the outcome to something I'll call cx which is a class of x and that now is an object whose class property is u and a. That itself is now a character. It turns out that int max of 
this character CX class is my 255, which is a uint date. But if I double that, I get a real number that says the number 255 in a double. So for complete flexibility, I'll add this statement to my code. And then I'll use the outcome of that to find out the class completely implicitly. So with this line, I'm telling it, read the image, find out the properties of the image, one of which is class. Look for the maximum value that this class has, convert it to a double, and then make a linearly spaced array between zero and that maximum in 15 steps using the command lint space. This now is doing what I was doing, but it's doing it in a smart way that learns from the image what the maximum value is. I don't like the fact that these histograms don't end at the right place. They sort of end wherever MATLAB wants it to end, and 300 is a nice round number. But if I know it's 255, I should be limiting my axes to an axis limit of 255. I get this right here by using the command xlim. And I want to create a variable, which I'll call histxlim, that's going to be applied to each of these histograms. And I'll early on get those limits from the bins I just created, the first one through the end one. So I learn from the image what the classes are. I learn between what values they go. I'll tell it how many bins I want. And I'll restrict the axes being shown to x limits of the first bin, left edge, and the last bin, right edge. And I'll apply it to each of those values. Edit, run. Now the histograms end there. Now remember in the previous play, we were setting labels for x on the image. We were setting labels for y on the image. We were setting a title. And then we were labeling the first and the last and every interior hundredth of the pixel using that construction that we made in video zebra command line. Edit run. You'll see now I have my ticks where I want them there. I suppose that I don't like the fact that this is very, very explicit and I'm repeating the same statement over and over again. There is a way of doing this in one way and I'll just label these things cosmetics. I'm going to foresee that I'll be using the same limits for two, three, and four of the array AH. So AH two through four are going to get the same X limits. And I can't use the object notation of a collection of objects here. I can't just say dot X len and then say hist xlim. If I try that, it's going to complain because it doesn't know how to do it. It does, however, know it how to do it another way by using the MATLAB function set. Set these values, this properties, to these histogram limits. And with this, I can set them to the same value. Create my figure, building my script, run zebras, and there I go. As I'm doing this again, of course, I'd like to use the same idea for the tick marks 
one axis through to four. And I'm going to copy here from the lines I saved from before that I will be using the last of the x limits divided by 100, round down using floor to the nearest integer. Use every one of them through the end of them and then use the unique combination of one, the last one, and every interior 100, if you want to look at what that looks like, this looks like the number two. This looks like one and two. This here looks like 100 and 200. This one looks like one, 100, 200, 255. And then to make sure I don't hit boundaries again, I'll just sort them and take the unique values and that will be 1, 100, 200, 255. In this case, there wasn't any concern because I didn't hit the boundaries already. And so unique simply sorts the values, which incidentally were already sorted. The upshot is that I can use this command here, executed, and now all of them are going to be labeled in the way that I want them. There is another thing that I would like to do. I would like to label these things. And I'm going through the same thought process here. I could use label red and green and blue. Edit, run. There are my labels. Once again, I don't like to type X label too many times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a little bit earlier on where my preparations go, a cell array. And in that cell array, as you recall, which is a set of things collected using curly braces, I'm going to say, give me call X red, green, blue. This cell can be called like this, with curly braces. One is red, two is green, three is blue. And instead of saying X lim red, X label red, X label green, X label blue, I'll use a control structure. I'll use four indexes one through the length of that cell array which I'll quickly check is the number three. And for each of the one and two and three, I will then set the axis. I'll make the axis index plus one active. Let's just think about this. Index is one, hit, axes a h two make it active and set its label to x label of call x index and of course here too I use index plus one because I have already used or I'm about to, an output for the first label that I ever did, call it XL1, YL1, such that by now, when I'm on my histogram labeling, I'll be labeling XL2 is the X label using the first label applied to axis AH2. Think about it when you go through a loop. Pretend you're the loop itself. Four indexes one through three, the first time you're in it, index is one. Axis H2, X label two is X label call X one, and that'll be red, and then green, and then blue. Let's see. No change, 
It's indeed what I was trying to do. Of course, I'm overdoing it. And now I've got to get rid of these things. Make sure it still works. I save. I clear my figure. I execute it, the script again. And there's what I wanted to do. Now I do want to do a couple more things. Wouldn't it be nice if I could also set the colors of the histograms themselves to show up in the colors that I'm representing? For that to happen, I need to give an output to the function histogram. I'll just call this what comes out h1, h2, h3. If I do a thing like this here, h1 is the histogram of that. And I have a set of properties that I can set. And one of those properties is face color. So if I set h1 dot face color to red, which is call x of 1, I make it red. If I set h2 face color to call x2, I'm going to get green and so on. So what I'll do is I'll make another little loop, or rather inside of this loop, I'll do this here. I'll set h of whichever index I'm at, its face color to call x of whichever index I'm at. Let me clear the figure. As you remember, it happens before, so I'm always starting from a clean slate. Execute run red green blue i would like to now say equalize the y-axis limits between those three histograms because if one of them has a lot of values and the other one doesn't matlab will automatically scale them appropriately such that they fit but i'd rather see the relative proportions between the heights of the bars now i have properties h1 h2, and so on. If I inspect what I have wrought, I see that h1 has a face color that's red. h2 has a face color that's green. h3 has a face color that's blue. But there are many more properties I can set. And one of them is I can look at the property capital letter values. These values that come out here for one are the heights of the bars. 14,000, 20,000, 11,000, 10,000, and so on. I'd like to now collect all the values in one giant array and take the maximum across all those values. If I thought naively that I could just ask for all the values by asking for h, any and all in the values, I will get, I'll turn more on, one answer, another answer, and another answer. So I do get three sets of values. The last one that comes out is 25, that's 25, then it's 15, 30, and so on. I cannot, however, just ask for the maximum value of all of these things because it doesn't work on three things at once when they're separate results in this way. But what I can do is I can concatenate them using the function cat in one array. And notice that every one that came out is a row vector with a certain number of columns. And the column dimension of every row is the second dimension. So if I concatenate all these values in the second dimension, I do get one long vector of all the heights of all the bars. So with this, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to set of these 
handles two, three, four. The property while then two at least zero. And then maybe I can just say the maximum of the concatenated second dimension, all of the histograms values. Copy that line to see if it works. And there I go. Of course, this is exactly to the maximum. I'd like to give myself some leeway. So how about 10% more to open it up slightly. Let me run the function again. And there I go. I'm going to slightly clean this up here and say define histogram parameters. I'm going to move it a little bit around just because I'll put this one here. I'll put this one there. As long as I don't use it before I make it, I should have the right set of properties and values. And so I edit and I run and I get my picture. I'm already writing the picture. I'm using my operating system here to show me that yes, I just made a file called zebras.pf and I might just look at it by typing zebras.pf in my own operating system. And there is my PDF picture ready to be used in a presentation. Believe it or not, but this is almost everything you need to learn about MATLAB. If you can do it on the command line, as you can see, I do it by trial and error. I switch between what I want to try and then I save it in my script. At the end of the day, I repeatedly evaluate my function to make sure that the figure is exactly as I want it. I inspect the figure in the PDF to make sure that that is indeed what I want to set in my report. And when I'm done, I'm finished. I have a script that loads a picture determines its class, collects the colors, gives them some names, which I'll be reusing, their actual colors, set some histogram parameters, make the first picture, which is the image of the zebra itself, second, third, and fourth picture, the histograms, some cleanup on the axis, and then end with some output or some printed figures and so on. I'll annotate this one a little better. Always better to do more than less. And this is my completed script. Some minor preparation, a bit of input and class determination, some actual calculations. Here's what I'll be changing in future editions some parameters and then the figure making, the cosmetics and the print of the final figure.